Margarine cakes were very popular back in the day. I will tell you that it is a wonderful recipe for those with dietary restrictions and it is actually very delicious. Here are your ingredients, but don't worry, I'll include a link below that will give you full nutrition information and more details as usual. You are going to need a 9 inch pan that is 2 inches tall, that is 23 centimeters round by 5 centimeters tall. I like to use one of the packages of the margarine and just wipe it around and then I'm going to line it with some parchment paper to make sure that it comes out really easily. You can take this package and put it in the freezer and use it multiple times. You want a piece of parchment that is slightly wider than the base of your pan. And we're going to fold this in half and then we're going to fold it in half again and then we're going to make it into a triangle by bringing the points like this and then bringing it over one more time. Now flip over your pan and try to find the center point. As close as you can get it will make it perfect. Once you do that, use your thumb and hold that area and then you're just going to cut straight across like this. I don't know how this works, it's got to do with geometry, which I was terrible at math, but look at this. You get a very nice circular piece of wax paper or parchment paper to put in the bottom of your pan. Isn't this amazing? I'm always impressed by this. Once you have this placed in the bottom of the pan, you're going to also need a cooling rack, which you'll set aside. Go ahead and preheat that oven to 325 or 160 degrees Celsius. And we're going to get started with the rest of the recipe. The first thing you want to do is mix up your dry ingredients. Now, the pinch of salt is completely optional here, especially if your margarine you know is very salty. I would skip it. Then you're going to need one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, which is six grams, and you are going to add that to one and a half cups of flour, which is 225 grams. A pinch of salt is around a half a gram if you aren't sure what it is. And when I mean a pinch, I mean you just get a pinch of salt between your fingers. Next thing you're going to do is add one cup of margarine, which is softened, 226 grams, and add one cup of sugar, which is 200 grams. And you want the margarine to be softened. It takes about 30 minutes at room temperature. You beat this together until it's nice and smooth and creamy, much like butter. It will look like this. At this point, we're going to add in the eggs one at a time, and the reason you don't put them all in at once is because it can curdle the mixture. That's four eggs total, 200 grams. Now, if you start to see it wanting to split, you can add a little spoonful of flour in between each egg, and that will help it keep from curdling. It's not necessary because this is a very forgiving recipe. At the end of all the eggs, it will be a loose batter like this. At this point, we're going to add in our flavoring, which is one teaspoon of vanilla or any flavoring of your choice, or five milliliters. And try your best not to throw in the spoon at the end, like this. Now you get to see the true issues with my hand in this recipe. If that does happen, just scrape off the batter that accumulated and then just put in the flour mixture that we made earlier. You can do this by hand at this point and mix it in like this or you can go ahead and use the mixer. Now if you use the mixer make sure to turn it on low speed or flour is going to fly everywhere and expect some flour to come out of the side like it did here. And you're going to mix this until you no longer see any flour in the mixture. You may see some on the sides like this just scrape it off at the end and mix it in like so. You now want to put this into your cake pan and level it out. It's going to be a very thick batter, so take your time. The more you level it out, the more level the cake will be. If you don't level it out, you'll end up with domes or even sideways cake. And you'll see later on, I wasn't as careful as I probably should have been, and I ended up with a nice dome. But actually, I think it worked out well because it was kind of pretty. So take your time with this step. You want to bake this 40 to 45 minutes. If you're wanting to know that the temperature, it would be 200 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 to 96 degrees Celsius in the center. But a visual way to look is when you press down on it, you wouldn't feel it sticky. It will bounce back. There'll be some slight separation from the side. And if you stuck a toothpick in the middle, it should come out clean. Now to remove this from the pan after five minutes of cooling, you want to loosen the edges. If this is a non-stick pan, please don't use metal utensils. You will ruin your pan. Once you get it loosened on the edges, it should just pop out right like this. Peel off that parchment paper and then turn it back upside down 
or right side up, I'm sorry, and let it cool completely before you put the frosting on or the frosting will melt completely. In a medium bowl, we're gonna put one half cup of softened margarine, 113 grams, and beat it until it is smooth and creamy like this. And then we're gonna start adding in our powdered sugar, which is two and a half cups of powdered sugar, 312.5 grams approximately. And you wanna put in a little bit at a time because if not, it will go flying everywhere and you'll have a gritty topping. You want it to be as smooth as possible and this just ensures it's so. So do this a little bit at a time until it's completely incorporated and looks like this. It's so smooth and creamy at this point. Now this next step is completely optional. It just helps cut the sweetness a little bit. I'm putting in a half a teaspoon of vinegar, which is 2.5 milliliters. And all that does is just make it less sweet tasting because you have to put a lot of sugar in this to keep it from getting too thin. And it just balances it out nicely. You can skip that entirely. Now I do recommend if you do this route, do one quarter of a teaspoon at a time and give it a quick taste to make sure that you don't wanna add that extra quarter teaspoon. Once that is completely combined, we're gonna put in our flavoring. I like to use a quarter of a teaspoon, but you can use more or less and just taste it as you put it in. I do recommend going one quarter of a teaspoon at a time. That way you can always put more in, you can't take more out. And that is about 1.25 milliliters. After you are happy with the flavoring of your frosting, and again, if you don't like vanilla, you can use any flavoring you like. You can use orange like I'm doing here. Check the consistency. If it's really hard to stir, go ahead and add some milk in to loosen it up. Up to one teaspoon of milk, five milliliters. And it's always better to add a little bit at a time, so that way you don't have to add more powdered sugar and make it even more sweet. It should look like this and just be really nice, thick, but still easy to spread, and it should look very beautiful. At this point, we are ready to ice our cake, and again, you want a really cold cake. You could even put it in the refrigerator. If you have a warm cake, it's going to go out everywhere and spread all over the place. Touch the top of the cake if you have clean hands and ensure that it is cold. This is where you'll start to discover I am not the best cake decorator in the world, and there are some wonderful videos and YouTubers that you can watch that will teach you how to decorate a cake absolutely beautiful, but I'm going to show you the basics. I just smear it on the top and then drag it toward the sides, and once I get it to the side, I will just lightly put it on the side and then just pull it over. Now there's things that you can do like crumb coats and then refrigerate it and make it look a lot nicer, which I recommend doing if you really want to get into cake making, or you can just make it look rustic like this and everybody that has ever had a homemade cake has had one of these very poorly <laughs> decorated cakes in their lifetime. And honestly, no one cares if it tastes absolutely delicious. Sure, I should have wiped off the excess, put on some decorations, but this is what I do. I just get some sprinkles and I put it on top and I go, hey, here you go. Here's a nicely decorated cake. Isn't it absolutely wonderful? And honestly, if you're giving this to your family and friends, they're going to absolutely love the cake. They're going to be gracious and they're not going to make fun of your cake. Or maybe they will if they're friends like mine are. It's okay. Just work on flavor first and then you can work on decorations. Or you can work on decorations and have a cardboard tasting cake. Either way is fine. Let's cut into this so you can see how nice and fluffy this cake is. I'm telling you, you wouldn't know this wasn't a butter cake, and this lets everyone be able to enjoy cake. Yes, we can go into whether or not margarine is healthy for you, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here just to show you how to bake a wonderfully nice, moist cake. And let me tell you, this is an absolutely delicious cake. Once again, I am not good at presentation, but it doesn't matter if it tastes good. Visit us at jacksonsjob.com for more recipes, and as always, Happy baking.